We're working through part four of problem three on the practice exam. Use any existing well-known algorithm or data structure and give an efficient algorithm to find the kth, the two kth, the three kth, and so on and so forth, smallest elements of an array of n integers and analyze its runtime in terms of k and n. By the way, if we're analyzing in terms of both k and n, k and n are both inputs. You should not consider k a constant. It's not a constant. However, it is often the case when we use k and n, just by convention, we will often figure that k is smaller than n. You shouldn't assume that, but does it make sense in this problem? If k were larger than n, then you're going to look for like the n plus one smallest element. Well, there is no such element, so you'll stop right away. You won't give anything back. So it probably does make sense here to assume k is less than or equal to n. Okay, if k is one, then you're looking for every element of the array, the smallest, the second smallest, the third smallest, the fourth smallest, the fifth smallest, and so on and so forth. That's all the elements of the array. Um, if k is two, then you're looking for the second smallest, the fourth smallest, the sixth smallest, the eighth smallest, the tenth smallest, and so on and so forth. If k happens to be equal to n, you're just looking for the nth smallest, the largest, and then you're done. Okay, so different values of k are gonna have different results. Uh, it's worth noting it doesn't say to find these elements in order. So when k is equal to one, maybe it would just be okay to return the whole array and say, here they are, uh, and you wouldn't have to do anything to the array in that case. Um, or maybe this problem is really asking for them in sorted order. That's a little unclear. Uh, so let's, let's assume since it doesn't say anything that it doesn't need them in sorted order. We might find that we don't have an algorithm uh, that, that gains any traction from not putting them in sorted order. It might be just as easy to put them in sorted order. So let's see what we can do. Um, well, an obvious thing, let's, let's try stuff out, okay? So first try. Sort as step one. Okay, and we can do that in n log n time asymptotically, right? So we'll call it c times n log n time just to remind ourselves that it's asymptotic. Uh, we know we can do that with various sorting algorithms. Merge sort is usually the one we reach for uh, just because it's got a worst case n log n bound. So we can definitely do this in n log n time. Um, that doesn't depend on k. Uh, and then next up we can, uh, we can return uh, elements k, 2k, 3k, and so on and so forth. Uh, and how long does that take? Well, to make that list, we're going to have to look at n over k elements. So that's going to take, you know, o of n over k time. Uh, but o of n over k time, that's going to be dominated by n log n time. So this algorithm overall is going to take n log n time. And we can call that a theta bound in the worst case. All right, well, that's, that's kind of the obvious approach. Uh, let's try something less obvious. Um, we can do this with, uh, with quick select or, or even with deterministic select. Uh, since we're not actually writing the algorithm, it, we can always choose deterministic select and get worst case be behavior. Uh, if we're actually writing it, we would probably say we'd rather use quick select. Unless someone has written it for us and it's actually fast, which it typically isn't. Okay, so second try. We're going to try using select. Um, so for i uh, equals 1 to uh, n over k, uh, just as an exercise, let's see, k, 2k, 3k, when does that exceed n? Well, it equals n uh, when i is equal to n over k, because n over k times k is n. Um, but n over k is not necessarily a an integer. So do we want to let i go up to the floor of n over k or the ceiling of n over k? Uh, the ceiling could be too big, right? If, if n over k is not an integer, then the ceiling of n over k times i is actually larger than n over k, and we don't want to go past the end. So we actually want to go to the floor of n over k. That'll guarantee that we do not go past the end. Uh, and so for each of those... Um, uh, output, and I'm going to assume output here doesn't mean like right to the screen, it means like append to a list of outputs. Uh, quick select um, from our array uh, the i times kth smallest element. 
Okay, so this step right here, this takes uh, theta n time, um, oh, sorry, we can use deterministic select, uh, and then it takes theta n time in the worst case. Okay, uh, and remember, it does not depend on k. Uh, it doesn't matter what order statistic we go for, this takes theta n time. Uh, however, this loop runs exactly k times, uh, sorry, exactly, not k times, it runs exactly n over k times. Right. Uh, well, floor of n over k times, but uh, you know, if we're looking at a worst case bound and asymptotic bound, we clearly don't care about that floor. So overall, then this is going to be theta n squared over k time. Uh, how does that compare to n log n time? Uh, that's actually it's not totally clear uh, how that compares to n log n time. Um, okay, that's a that's a good second try. Um, for a third try, perhaps we can go for a divide and conquer algorithm. So third try, we can, if, uh, if K is greater than N, we can just, uh, halt, right? We don't, we don't care or return. We'll say, you know what? I need a little bit more room. So I'm just going to move this down here and I'll block off this side here for our work. So we're going to write an algorithm, uh, find uh, all, or how about select all, select all uh, given an array A and a value K, it's going to get the kth smallest and the two kth smallest and so on and so forth. Okay, now, so if k is greater than the length of a, so greater than n, we're just going to return. Uh, otherwise, let's try dividing in half, uh, you know, roughly dividing in half anyway. Um, so we are going to grab the middle element of these. So uh, count is the floor of the length of A over K. So remember, we want the Kth smallest and the 2 Kth and the 3 Kth up to the floor of A over Kth smallest, and then we'll have gotten all of the ones that we want. So mid, that can be equal to uh, count over 2, right? Um, so that will be the, the middle element that we're looking at. Uh, and the, the way I'm going to do it, I think if, if it's not actually going to be the middle element, I'm going to make it a little bit larger than the middle element. So I'm going to have it be mid is going to be the ceiling of count over two. Uh, and I, I don't think it's going to matter that much, but all I'm doing here is I'm going to divide in half with mid. So then I'm going to, um, let's see, I'm going to let pivot be equal to deterministic select on A, uh, the mid times kth element. Now, everything up to this point uh, just takes constant time. This line, though, this takes theta length of A time, okay? Which is theta n time. But now I've got a pivot, and I can uh, take the left half and the right half here and I can partition and I'm not going to write out an algorithm to partition because you already know how to partition the array A on the pivot. So I'm going to get everything smaller than A and everything larger than A. I still need a bit more space, sorry about that. I did warn I think that this is a pretty long problem. Okay. <clears throat> Now I've got a left half and a right half, and um, you know what? Uh, just to simplify my algorithm, I think I'm actually, I'm gonna call this uh, pivot one, uh, and I'm gonna also get pivot two. This is just for my own ease. Um, and I'm gonna, let's see. 
Oh, you know what? What I was going to do is I was going to get two pivots to ensure that both left and right were no larger than half as large as the original problem. Uh, but that's actually going to be a huge mess uh, because then I need to special case the case where there's there's actually only one item. Uh, that we're looking for because because my my base case is when we're looking for no items at all um, so uh, never mind that fleeting idea this is just gonna be a bit messy that's all but the basic idea that I'm hoping for here is I'm gonna make a recursive call on the left I'm gonna make a recursive call on the right uh, and with those two recursive calls then I will finish the uh, problem so I'm gonna return I am going to return um, this algorithm select all called on the left with K and you know what now that I think about it I think I'm gonna need an offset as well so I'm gonna leave a little extra space there because when I do select all on the right, I, I'm actually, uh... oh no, I guess when I do select all on the right, I do want the kth largest, right? I don't want the next element. I want k after the, the pivot. So, so this really is perfect. It'll work. Uh, plus I'm going to give back the pivot. Plus I'm going to give back select all on the right with K. So I can go back up and forget about that second argument. So finally something something became simple in this problem. Okay, now is this going to work? Uh, so let's do a quick sketch of an inductive proof that this algorithm actually works. So of course for an inductive proof we're going to show that the base case works. If K is larger than N, we already said earlier, we don't, we don't want anything, right? So we're going to return the empty list and that will be correct. Okay, otherwise, uh, if k is less than or equal to n, we have at least one element to return. A count, we already described why that is the number of elements that we want to return. Um, mid is count over to the ceiling of that quantity. So even if count is one, uh, mid is at least one, and it's never going to be more than count. Uh, so this is perfect. Mid will be some item that we're looking for somewhere in there. Actually, it'll be the, the sort of index of that item. So it'll be the i times kth item that we're actually looking for. And it'll be about the middle item. Okay, uh, and then pivot is we deterministic select from the array the particular item that we're looking for, mid times k. That's the item that we were looking for. That will certainly take linear time in the length of the array. Then we partition the array into a left half and a right half. Uh, and then, uh, and we can assume that this partition works. Oh, by the way, how long does the partition take? That also takes theta a time, right? theta n time, uh, because we just go through each element and we plop it in the left half if it's smaller than the pivot, in the right half if it's larger. Uh, and then what we get to assume select all left k gets the kth and the 2kth and the 3kth and so on and so forth, because this is an induction proof. We assume our recursive call works. We get to assume select all on the right works as well, and it really is what we're looking for, right? Because let's say mid is the 7kth. Uh, largest item. The next item we want is the 8kth, 8kth largest item, and that is indeed k larger than the 7kth largest item. So select all on the right will give us the kth, the 2kth, the 3kth on the right, and that will be the correct elements to include. Pivot is a correct element to include, and that's all the elements we need. So this function really does work. Uh, how long does it take? Well, we get a recurrence here, right? So t of um, n comma k is equal to 1 uh, at 4 uh, k greater than or equal to n. And t of n comma k is equal to um, theta n. I'm going to abuse notation here. You, you do not usually get to say theta n plus something, but it's some linear function. Uh, plus t of I would like to say here, okay, I, I'm, I'm going to really abuse notation here, and I'm going to say 2t of n over 2 comma k otherwise. Is it really 2t of n over 2? Did I really divide precisely in half here? 
No, I didn't. But I promise you, I, I could in linear time ensure that it's no more than this. Uh, and I could do that just by taking, there's going to be two elements we're looking for in roughly the middle. And uh, maybe one, we might coincidentally be looking for the median element, right? But there will certainly be two that are the middle most elements and the median will be somewhere between those middle most elements. So again, like I was sort of haltingly suggesting earlier, I could choose the smaller pivot and the larger pivot and then I could I could put those in the middle so in here instead of just having pivot I would have two pivots um, that would make my algorithm more complex but it would certainly ensure that left and right which would left would be all the stuff smaller than the smaller pivot and right would be all the stuff larger than the larger pivot are less than half as large as the original uh, but in fact these are going to be within k of half as large uh, for small k that's going to work great and for large k the algorithm is just going to terminate really quickly um, so this should be fine either way I I'm just going to approximate this by saying 2t of n over 2 comma k and what what will the runtime of this look like? Um, well, the only weird thing here is that the base case is dependent on k. So if k is very, very small, like if k is equal to 1, um, then this looks just like merge sort. Okay, so it's certainly no worse than n log n. As k gets larger, we're, we're cutting off bottom parts of the array. Uh, of the tree, right? So if, if we draw this tree, we're doing n work here. We're doing n work here because each of these is size n over 2, right? And then da 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 da. Where is the base case? Well, the base case, we're going to have, you know, a bunch of nodes in the base case. And the problem size in each of these nodes is going to be k. Right? Because our base case is when n is less than or equal to k. So what will the height of this tree be? Well, this is level 0, this is level 1, da 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 da, this is level i, and the problem size, problem size at i, that is equal to n over 2 to the i, right? Because we're dividing the problem size in half at each level. We've seen that tons and tons of times. So when is n over 2 to the i equal to k? Remember, i is what we get to choose. We get to choose what level we're thinking about here. So we want to solve for i here. Um, so n is equal to k times 2 to the i. Let's take the log of both sides. Log of n is equal to the log of k times 2 to the i is the log of k plus the log of 2 to the i. Uh, so the log of n minus the log of k is equal to the log of 2 to the i is just i. And so i is equal to the log of n over k. All right, so we have log of n over k levels. We have n work at each level. So we'll have n times log of n over k work. And that is better than what we've seen before. So this will run in theta. By the way, I've been really sloppy about that middle case, but it's going to work out. This will run in theta n of log of n over k time. And let's compare that to our first try and our second try here. Uh, obviously, for small k, log of n over k and log of n are going to be the same. So for small k, this algorithm works about the same. n squared over k, uh, for large k, that works out to, you know, closing in on theta n time, right? But if we look down at our new algorithm, actually for large k, that one also looks good. For large k, log of n over k gets closer and closer to log of 1. And so this thing goes down to 0, actually, for large k. It goes down to, you know, a very quick runtime. Um, so this is definitely the best of the three algorithms that we've discussed.